We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week we have a story for you. Now, if you recall from one of our previous tips, we talked about ADSB, how it is a wonderful technology to keep you safe in your aircraft, but at the same time offers some challenges when it comes to allowing others to know exactly what you're up to and have done, including the FAA. Well, finally, somebody has run a foul of the law because of ADSB, and they wished that it hadn't happened quite this way. So we're going to review this so that you understand exactly what can happen because of having ADSB in your aircraft, and it's not a good thing. So let's take a look at what happened to this poor woman. This story comes to us from AV Web, and I'll put a link down below so you can read the details to fill in the gaps. I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version. This woman named Martha, who is 78 years old, a veteran flight instructor, thousands of hours, also an FAA inspector, Back in March of 2020, so that's about a year ago from when we're filming this, not that long ago, she has a Cessna 180 and she decided to take a zip underneath a bridge just for fun. She knew better, she admits it. It wasn't a dangerous operation. There was lots of room between the river down below and the bridge. She did that. And of course, she understood what the consequences of that was going to be. Turned out, well, how would anyone ever know? There was a camera on the bridge, took a picture of her. So she did get a letter from the FAA about this violation. And she understood the consequences, no problem. Here's the wrinkle. In the 180, she had ADSB. So what does the FAA do? Well, as we talked about in the previous tip, everything you do with your ADSB is recorded in a big set of computers. Remember your location, the time, the altitude, your speed is all recorded, kept forever on a computer at the FAA offices. So they went back to review this flying under a bridge to see how it looked from an ADSB perspective. And guess what they found? Well, they didn't find exactly what they thought they would find. Her AD ADSB tracking record in the computer showed her traveling prior to the under the bridge incident and later afterwards. Guess what? The ADSB record was missing for the time interval of flying under the bridge. Now, we can all imagine how that happened, but as the story goes, the ADSB was inoperative due to technical problems during that time, so she says. Well, you could argue one way or the other whether that's true. The point is, it would certainly be a normal thing to do. If you knew you were going to do something bad, you might want to turn off something that would record evidence. The point is, is that from the FAA's perspective, they found that the ADB, ADSB record was discontinued during a particular violation, and that in itself is a problem and they have a penalty for exactly this type of 
occurrence, as you can well imagine, right? You don't want to have a wonderful tool and then be able to turn it off. We all learned from the previous tip, right, that you are not allowed to turn off or disable your ADS-B once it's installed in the aircraft. Plain and simple. And if you do, what can happen? And here's the key. What can happen? This is what we found out can happen if there is a occurrence of ADS-B failure for whatever reason and the FAA catches you. In January of 2020, the FAA created a new section of its Legal Enforcement Actions Guidebook which calls for revocation of certificate, which of course means taking away your pilot's license permanently. For what reason? For operating an aircraft without activated transponder or ADS-B out for the purpose of evading detection. Here is the actual order which you can look up online if you look up at the upper right hand corner. That's order 2050.3C and notice below the effective date was January of 2020. Now on this page, 9-13, note figure 9-5. This is kind of interesting. Single acts generally warranting revocation. Single acts, that's how serious this is. And if you look at number 9 at the bottom, transmitting inaccurate ADSB out or transponder information with the intent to deceive. And if you go to the very next page, the very bottom, 914, number 30, operating an aircraft without activated transponder or ADSB out transmission. So it is very clear that doing these things or not doing them properly with your ADSB equipment is so serious that they have written down that they will revoke your license permanently. So you know Martha did have her license permanently revoked over this. She could not prove that she didn't intentionally turn her ADSB off. Well that is some severe penalty losing your license permanently. You can go back and get qualified again, go through the student training and get your licenses back. But what I want to thank this woman for is not to judge her one way or the other as far as what happened to the ADSB malfunction, but rather she has helped taught the community what the penalties and dangers are for any fiddling around with the ADSB signal once it's put in your plane, which to me is a bigger piece of advice, if you will, and that is if you really don't need to have one, don't get one. And we talked about this in the previous tip. If you don't fly into controlled air spaces, you don't need to get one. Just like the transponder, right? You don't have to have a transponder back in the good old days if you didn't fly into controlled air spaces. Now you can argue one way or the other that people get what they deserve and all of that, but it's important nonetheless to understand that everything you do in that airplane with an ADS-B system is being recorded for better or for worse. Boy, I sure hope the insurance companies aren't looking at those records. Well, I wonder exactly who can see those records beyond just the FAA. All of us can, but how easy is it? Well, what we're going to do next is to take a look at how easy it is for all of us to see our fellow pilot, our fellow neighbor, fly in their plane, where they've been, where they've gone, have they broken any rules? And all you need is a smartphone. Let's take a look at a free app that you can get on your smartphone that will show you exactly what the FAA was able to see on anybody that has an ADS-B 
equipped aircraft. This is an example of an app. Now, it's not the only one out there, so I'm not endorsing it, but I'm going to give you a quick demonstration. Go to your Play Store or your App Store and download Flight Aware Flight Tracker. It is free. It also runs on your laptop. So here is a quick demonstration of Flight Aware from a non-expert, but someone who loves to track airplanes. I'm simply going to press the icon up here and I'm going to swipe up to get a map. Now this is a map of the United States and of course you can adjust it and zoom in but what you're looking at are all of the current live flights in the air at this time. Quite amazing how they're tracking all of those and you have access to them. Now we're going to zoom in so we can kind of see how we can get some information and I have an old phone and a slow internet connection so when you got this many data points it's not too good uh, let's go up to the Milwaukee area so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see individual flights now for example we see that airplane there there's two of them flying over the uh, the lake. I'm going to touch one of the airplanes, and it will give me the information on that plane, that flight. We got the tail number, and this LAS to JFK, so that would be Los Angeles to JFK, and the other information, speed and altitude. I'm reading this from upside down. So on all of the scheduled commercial flights, everything's available here by simply touching the airplane and you can get quite a bit of information but the important thing I want to point out is as as fun as it is to watch scheduled airlines and track them as they go you can also watch private airplanes with or without flight plans if they have ADS-B this will pick up virtually all of them Obviously, the app's not guaranteed to pick up every single one. But let's say, for example, you know your neighbor's tail number and you want to see what flights he's either taking currently or in the past. And the way we do that is I'm going to swipe down. And in this box at the top, you simply enter a tail number. Now, here are my recent searches, so I'll pick one of those so I don't have to type the number in. This N750YN, that's a tail number. I'm going to touch that. I could type it in here, but I'm going to touch it because it's easier. And what happens is it magically shows you all of the past, recent past trips this private pilot has taken in this plane because the plane has ADS-B, the information is tracked in the government computers, this app has access to that data. So on its most recent trip here, and I'm reading kind of sideways, on April the 21st was its last flight from this airport to that airport, Mexico, Missouri. Now if I go ahead and touch this to get more information about it, it first actually shows me the track it took on the map, I can even play it back by pressing these buttons here so I can see where it was at a particular minute and second in time. I can push the I down here for more information on this flight for this N750YN on this particular trip. And look what we got up here. I'm going to go over to the tab called Track Log. I push that tab and what we have here is a graph and here's the numerical data that backs up this graph but basically we have speed or altitude on one y-axis and speed on the other y-axis as a function of time on the x-axis so during this trip at any point in time I can tell you the altitude and the speed of that aircraft so like I say, this is available to anyone for free with an app like this. Any aircraft that has ADS-B, data goes into the main computer, app like this has access to it. Now there's a lot more things you can do than just look over live and the last few flights of a particular aircraft. If you pay the premium price for this app, I don't know, it's 5 or $10 
either a month or a year, I don't know. You can set up alerts so that you can be alerted on your phone whenever this aircraft takes off so you can track them in real time. So there's, there is quite a bit you can do with any aircraft. Next time you're out at the airport, you see an airplane land, type in its tail number. You get to see where it came from, where it's been in the last few days, and what speeds and locations it took. Um, it's kind of interesting to see people who are practicing because you will notice that uh, their flight path will be a bunch of circles rather than a straight line like this one did. Uh, all sorts of very interesting things um, with a simple app like that. So that really concludes my demonstration. So any phone, free app, flight aware, and it's ready to go. You need to know someone's tail number and you'll be amazed at what you and the rest of the world have as far as information access to the use of their plane. And remember, they cannot turn off their ADSB. We know what happens when you do that. And there you have it. Now we all know a little bit more about the consequences of having erratic ADSB behavior at just those moments when someone is really interested in looking at what we're doing. Uh, the whole idea of Shutting something off like that, uh, it's, it can be mind-boggling, but this is the new world, and it's there for our safety. And of course, like everything else, right, 99% of the time, it's a good thing. It's at 1% when we feel a little childish or, you know, into some no good that these things can happen. But at least we know what the penalties are, and that helps make us better informed and better pilot. So no screwing around out there. Uh, barnstorming, what's that? I, re I remember that from the old days, yeah. I'm, I'm, gonna, get, I'm gonna get an ultralight. I think.